I've been asked to uh, talk about Steve Biko and specifically what he would have thought of the trajectory the country is on and where we are on the journey uh, 40 years after his death. The ideas of black consciousness, as he espoused, were an attempt to question authority and society that went over and beyond sheer politics and mere political formations. In fact, his friend Bani Pikiana said Biko went to school to study medicine, but it was evident that his interest at some point went well beyond the field of medicine. He never, of course, became a doctor of the body, but ultimately became a doctor of the soul. He would find compelling the work of the Steve Biko Center for Bioethics. Indeed, medical practitioners are often the eyes and the ears of our society. Their forensic work can be the voice of the silence, as was the case in his matter, when the forensic evidence, as compiled by Dr. Glackman, became his last testimony, his last words. The medical professional's judgment and ethical conduct is often the only door out of the grave of violence that has entrapped the girl child and their mother by the thousands, and whose, repeated, whose repeat offenders lie beyond the reach of the law. Biko would have called on the Center for Bioethics to enter the fray in defense of the dignity of the 94 psychiatric patients from Life Life as a Demani Center, who were released into undignified and preventable death at inadequate facilities by our health authorities. He would have raised his voice that the people that fought for freedom still have to wage more than 3,000 service delivery protests on an annual basis in order for their voice to be heard. The questions that he would have raised now have less to do with him and everything to do with us. He is, after all, in a restful place, having declared, and I quote, when you are dead, you don't care anyway. <laughs> but your method of death can itself be a politicizing thing. I think we can comfortably say that it's very clear that if we want to get anywhere in terms of transformation, each and every one of us needs to embrace it. We all own transformation. I don't think we can accept any longer that transformation is for one group and not another. Uh, the other thing is transformation goes beyond uh, demographics and race. It also includes a way of life. So how do we all strive towards a transformed way of life? How do we transform our mindsets so we all are open towards embracing each other? And if we can start off from that point, then transformation in the curriculum would be really very, very smooth sailing.